Hey everybody, it's Mike here at the We Rent Shop. Welcome to episode four, where we continue on disassembling the car in preparation for the powertrain to come out. Here's where we are currently. We're at a really cool place. We've divided the powertrain in the rear end. Differential is out, subframes down on the ground, and next is going to be the engine. The venerable S38 B36 power plant is about to be torn down, but not yet. We're gonna get there, so stay tuned. So progressing to uh, continuing to remove the front end of the vehicle, we're gonna start attacking it from the engine side. What we have to do is we have to undo uh, this radiator hose right here. We have to underdo, excuse me, undo this overflow hose. We have these uh, wonderful clips that I always seem to murder every time I have to touch them, but I think I figured out the trick to uh, using some diplomacy to coerce those off cleanly. We have to get the viscous fan out of here. This is always fun. It's actually a reverse thread, and what you have to do is counter hold the pulley down in there and then smack it loose with a special slim wrench, which I have, I'll show you. We gotta get the fan shroud out of the way. Uh, let's see from this side what's going on. This, I believe, is the uh, coolant temp sensor, uh, sensor for the fan, the electric fan. So that we just have to unplug. And then once we get that stuff done, the radiator is held in by some rubber mounts on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see that. Just some rubber mounts. We have to undo that lower radiator hose and uh, it should all come off. Once that's out of the way, we should be getting a clearer shot of how the AC condenser is held in. We'll get that out of there and then figure out how all this sheet metal comes off. Looks like a couple screws. So let's dive in. To get these crimp clamps off, sometimes dikes are good. This is a Nipix bolt cutter. This one works really well with getting these out of here. You gotta be careful not to cut through the hose either. And also, if you wrestle with these clamps too much, if it's on something plastic, you can end up breaking the plastic. Just a couple, couple tips from an ex-pro who's wrestled with quite a bit of these clamps in the past. All right, these clips here. I'm gonna use the long flat head on this one. So for viscous fans, here are the tools of the trade that a lot of pros use to get them off. This wrench here is uh, 32 millimeters on one side and 36 on the other. It's got a slim profile. Um, on this car, a regular 32 will work. I did try before I started filming to put my 32 millimeter Stallvilli wrench on there. But the slim profile, it's a little bit better. And what you gotta do is you gotta use this tool here. This tool attaches to the bolts on the pulley and it provides a counter hold. So then what you do is you put this wrench in here and then kind of like just go in the opposite. And remember that these are reverse threads. So to get it off, you have to do what looks like tightening the fan to get it off. Sometimes you gotta be a little abrupt. And when the fan is freewheeling, there you go. I actually snapped a blade off this fan. I don't know how that happened. Maybe from when I was pulling the hood off. It was not like that before I pulled it in though. All right, fan is off. Getting the fan out of here without pulling the shroud I think is a little difficult. No, right. oh, here we go. So that's what a viscous fan looks like. That's the thread. 
The way this works is that there's like a fluid clutch inside of here. And when the fan gets to a certain RPM, it heats it up with centrifugal force and then it starts to freewheel. So at lower RPMs, when you need more airflow coming through the engine compartment and through the radiator, it runs at engine speed and then starts to freewheel when the RPMs increase. And then the road, the wind from the road is uh, kind of what acts in lieu of the airflow that this provides. So the next thing is to get the fan shroud out of here. There are two push pins. And what you do is you use a small trim tool. You work that pin out of here. Just like that. Pop the pin out. And again, use finesse. Try not to pull this pin out all the way. If you keep it in there, it will release the pressure and you could keep this together because uh, otherwise you, you will lose it. So we're gonna go do that on the other side real quick. And the fan shroud is literally just kind of clips in there. Pull it straight out. It's really cool getting to this point because now you can actually really start to see what's going on in there. That radiator is new. Well, not new. I actually replaced it in 2010, I think. Uh, mileage wise though, it's new. Age wise, it's not. But it's pretty cool to be able to see this because now you can really see what's going on in there. So now let's get to these lovely clips. I've had this radiator out of this car probably three or four times since I've had it. And uh, every time I murder these clips, sometimes you get impatient and you just start prying until you get it off and you never really break it. But this time around, I actually spent a little time and looked at them. And here is the key to not murdering these clips. Take a flathead, that's the wrong one smaller flathead. The fasten points for these clips are here, top of the radiator, and there's also a lip that clamps underneath this metalwork. So what you have to do is take a flathead, push down, and then push the radiator back. And that is how you get these suckers off without murdering them. So we're gonna do one side, and the other down, and then back. Okay, no murder. And then we have this coolant temperature sensor plug on this side. Hope this doesn't fight me like the electric fan one did. Come on. Oh. All right, before I wrestle with this radiator, I just wanna take another look and make sure that there's something I'm not missing. This lower hose probably should come off. Let me do that one real quick. Remember, that's the lower hose that we took off when we drained it initially. So what I'm doing is I'm undoing the other side. It's a six mil or a flathead. Either one will work. Ten years ago, I also replaced all these hoses. So once again, it's not like they have a lot of miles on them, but they do have age. So when it comes to a hose, you know, these hoses, they, you know, they could dry rot. And they also fail from the inside out due to a phenomenon called electrolysis. You can have voltage in the cooling system, believe it or not. And it actually deteriorates these hoses. Very good. All right. I'm going to push it out the bottom and 
That's the lower hose. Okay. Let's see if I'm as good as I think I am. So on the left side, it's pulling the oil cooler up with it. Because I believe that the, there's like a mount. So I want everybody to see this. When I was trying to get the radiator out, I'm wondering why it's separated. I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't look like it's in focus, but it's free from the oil cooler on the right side. But on the left side, I was pulling up and taking the cooler with me. You can see the lines are rocking. That's because there's a clip right here that holds the oil cooler to the radiator. So if you just undo that clip, you just gotta like, you just gotta pop it off. There you go. The radiator is now free. So now we have the oil cooler just dangling down in there. I'm pretty sure the oil cooler is unique to the M5. I don't think the other 5 Series have it. It just has these two, uh, these two lines that go to the oil filter housing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let this dangle because I, don't, I know I'm going to struggle getting these apart. So I'm going to let it dangle for now. I'm going to get the AC condenser out of the way, which looks to me like these two bolts hold in the top. And then the bottom is these rubber mounts here. So when we undo the bolts, it should come right out. So I already know these are going to give me a hard time. So instead of trying to muscle it, I'm just going to use the other method that I used on the AC lines. Little bit of heat, not a lot, because there is an O-ring in there. And we're going to hit it with the old 50-50 mix of acetone and ATF. And let the chemical do the work. Thank you. 